Hello everybody, my name is Roxas. And I'm Soul Gale. And welcome back to Warframe. Whoa, are you ready? I'm ready. Alrighty. So, Rhino. How do you get him? Whoa. So, Rhino, you get him off of Venus. He's on Fossa. He's the assassination target here. He is actually one of the harder ones to actually get, especially for you earlier players just because the Jackal boss has been buffed quite significantly. Uh, usually with the older Jackal boss fight, which I was around for, you just go around and hit the four legs and be able to kill it. This time, though, there's a lot more going on. You have to use your Parazon to be able to take him down, and there's a lot more that you have to actually dodge and kind of just do -si do around. So it gets a lot harder for newer players to actually take down this boss. I don't know how difficult it is now, uh, depending on what frame you're using or if there's a certain way to cheese it, but it's pretty easy once you get to know the flow of the boss and it's pretty easy to take down. A lot of players though I have had come to me and they go, hey, you know, I can't kill this boss. This boss is taking too long. So we'll have to see what has to come of this. But for Rhino, Rhino is a mountain man. He is a very, very good frame. Shall we take a look at some of the abilities? We shall. Alrighty. So, Rhino's passive. Emit a shockwave dealing 100 damage after landing from a great height. So this is from falling from very, very high heights. If you have an Alexis, you will find heavy impact. This also creates a sec 6 meter seismic shockwave from heavy landings, dealing instead of 100 damage, 300 damage, and no knocking foes off their feet. This does pretty much the same thing as the passive. And in fact, it actually stacks with it. Fun fact, instead of just going the 6 meters, it'll go now a full 12 meters, making an even larger shockwave area of effect. Now, the interesting thing to note here, too, is it does knock people down, but throughout regular missions, throughout regular gameplay, we don't even use this. Most of the time, you're not falling from a high height. There's nothing really happening with high heights, so you can just completely ignore this passive. It's not all that useful to be really, really honest about it. Rhino Charge. Rhino charges toward a target, clobbering any in his path and goring his victim. Drain is 25 energy, speed is 48 meters per second. This is the speed from when you start the ability and how fast he travels at. It's basically like a vehicle traveling a distance or down a highway and you have a speed limit sign. That's basically what you're looking at there is that's his speed limit. That's 48 meters per second. The range of the ability, it only travels till 12 meters. At 12 meters, he travels 48 meters per second, and then at that 12 meter point, he just stops. He doesn't go any further than that. His car just puts on the brakes and stops right at the stoplight. So your damage for that is 650 da impact damage on impact. Radius is two meters. So the width of Rhino, from left to right is going to be two meters and it's just kind of be like a little bit of a wall pushing forward and dealing that damage. Combo window is basically if you just keep on pressing the button, you're gonna be able to deal more and more damage just based upon uh, if you let that combo window build up and if you keep on pressing the ability, it's just pretty much a combo window. Even Atlas has this. Uh, not Nothing too much specific that I really wanna go into there. It's just a combo window, nothing too important. Things to note with this one is with Iron Skin, when you have Iron Skin on, on Iron and uh, Rhino Charge, this then does blast damage when you have your Iron Skin on. And then if you do Rhino Stomp and you have enemies suspended in air, Rhino Charge also does two times its regular damage. So that's interesting that Rhino Stomp also multiplies the damage done by Rhino Charge. So that's pretty interesting to know. Uh, pretty useful sometimes, I guess, if you're trying to traverse area, areas of terrain. Uh, same thing with even Excalibur. His dash is pretty useful as well. 
but not as useful as something like, I would have to say, Volt or Gauss or anything that has a very good mobility, like even Titania, where, hey, I need to get through this mission, I need to get through it fast. A dash just isn't going to cut it, especially when you need to be doing maneuvers, when you're trying to make turns, not when you're trying to go in a straight line. When you're trying to go in a straight line, you're just going to be bouncing into walls. It's not very effective. When you're trying to traverse terrain, having the ability to actually maneuver throughout an ability is very useful, especially when you're trying to get to the end goal. So for mobility, not very useful. For other effects, it could be. Iron Skin. Rhino hardens his skin, insulating himself from all damage and gaining overguard. Drain is 50, overguard is 1,200 damage on a base. And the time invulnerable for this ability is 3 seconds. And I will get into this a little bit more when I get into the Archon Shards and maximization within this. Um, he, interesting thing to note, he gains complete immunity to all crowd control, all crowd control effects. It's really, really cool. It's really, really interesting, including something that I really don't like, which is Arcane Nullifier. If you have watched, I believe it was Nix's video, question mark. I'll have to look it up. But the Arcane Nullifier does not negate uh, ancient disruptors from draining your energy. Not the case, though, with Iron Skin. Iron Skin will completely ignore any energy drainage. So, if you're getting hit by anything that tries to drain your energy, it will completely ignore it. This is wonderful, especially for Rhino, because then he's never going to lose his energy, and he's always going to be able to pop Iron Skin. Very, very useful for this ability. And as I said, I'll come back into this ability and give it a little bit more detail on the exact overguard health and how that's actually calculated. Roar. Grants all nearby enemies, or not. <laughs> that would be awful. Grants all nearby Warframes increased damage for a short duration. Give myself some hydration there. Drain is 75 uh, energy. Duration is 30 seconds. Radius is 25 meters. And damage increase is by 50%. Um, some things to note here. This is actually... Um, grab my notes here. A lot to go through. This is actually a fraction damage bonus. So the way I actually figured this out was I used my MK1 bow. My MK1 bow on a base without any mods has 90 damage. When you're looking at Spoiled Strike, it adds 100% melee damage. And why I need a multiplier in here is so that I can test whether this ability actually adds a static bonus or a flat bonus where it's additive or if it multiplies the entire total bonus by a multiplier. So that's exactly what um, fraction bonuses do. And I actually kind of have to pull up the page for this. So underneath Roar, you have this ba damage buff as coded as fraction damage buff bonus. So fraction bonus is based upon a whole bunch of different things. It's a whole really all convoluted, but basically what it each fraction bonus does is it gives you more bonus toward one of each type of different unit. Grenier, infested, corrupted, sentient, narmer, the murmur, included. And the only ability that actually affects Fraction damage bonus is Rhino's Roar. So this is very interesting. Why is this the only ability that does this? I don't know. But well, how does this how does this damage work and why per each mod does it only affect one fraction? 
it only affects one fraction. So keep that in mind. This mod, this mod, this mod only affects corpus. This only affects screen air. This only affects, so when you equip this, it only does toward that unit. This is calculated via this page. They redirect you to this page to be able to figure out what fraction damage does. Fraction damage is multiplicative straight across from the multiplication table when you're dealing damage. So if you have 100 damage going through, serration, which is your basic uh, damage multipliers, and you have something like Bane of Grenier, which is a fraction mod bonus damage, and you have a slash proc. There's three different things here that are all going to get multiplied together. Your base damage is going to get multiplied by your serration, and then it's going to get multiplied by your slash damage, and then it's going to get multiplied by your Bane of Grenier. Now, everything in parentheses here is going to get added together before any of the multiplication here occurs. As per the acronym, please excuse my dear ex Aunt Sally, you're going to go parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and then subtraction. So here we actually have parentheses. Everything is going to get included here. So when we have something like this with Bane of Grenier, what is interesting is that this entire line, when you're taking an entire line and you're multiplying it across, like this, it is multiplying. If you take just one of these multipliers, and if I added another multiplier in here, and I took your entire damage number, and I said, okay, I want to multiply this by two, what happens to your entire damage number? Well, your damage doubles, because I just multiplied your entire damage by two, right? So I just doubled your damage. Well, same thing here. I'm adding in another fraction mod, which only adds 30% here, but one plus 30%, now I'm getting closer to two, but I'm not quite at two. If it's at one here, I have no change. If I have 100 damage by one, I have 100 damage. There's no change. But if I'm getting this one to two, I'm doubling my damage. So this is something that's really interesting with math is that now we're looking at something that could potentially straight up double our damage just by multiplying our damage straight on through. So with fraction mods though, it's specifically going to alter one of a different type of unit's damage. So this is pretty interesting. So this is how I learned that this was actually a fraction mod. I'll go back to the ability here, but so this actually has 90 damage on a base. And then I added spoiled strikes because I want to know if it actually multiplies through or if it's just additive. So how I did this is I went, okay, well, if it's actually going to be additive, we're going to be adding 100% melee damage plus one of the base damage, which base damage is always considered one in multiplication. And then you're going to add what your multiplier is. In this case, my multiplier is 1.43 at the very top of the screen. And then you get 3.43 by 90, which you get 308.7. So this should do, if it is just flat and it's just additive, it should do around 308, 309 damage. If it is multiplicative and it actually does do fraction damage bonus, then the equation would look a little bit different. You would have spoiled strike, of course, again, adding one melee damage plus one to your base damage, and that would be two multiplied by your base damage, which is 90 again, and then you're going to multiply that with your multiplier, which is 1.43 as per in that status report that you saw there, but you're also gonna add one because it's also a base damage in and of its own, basically becoming its own multiplier. What happens there, it goes from 1.43 to 2.43, and then if you multiply straight across, it's 437.4 damage. And how I tested this was with a charger with no armor, so you could actually see the 
full damage results so you can see whether it actually ends up going to be a flat or an additive or fraction multiplier. This works surprisingly with all fractions. Across the board, this is actually really interesting. I went from the ones that actually have like no fraction multiplier where they have no mods in their list, which is Narmer. Narmer has absolutely no fraction multipliers in, they have no mods associated with their fraction at all. And this still applied to them. And this works with your basic weapons and abilities, which is really, really interesting. And with abilities, this is interesting as well because you're taking all of your damage, usually when you're modding a Warframe, and you're taking that damage and you're multiplying it by your power strength. And then when this fraction damage is occurring, it's doing another multiplication by 1.25. And I have to go and show the page again. But this is what this equation looks like. So there's two different ones. There's one for fraction damage bonus for abilities. And this is the math here for that. And this is your modded weapon damage, which basically changes the raw weapon damage. And again, as I've shown with the weapon damage that I showed with the charger, this is exactly what happens right here. So when you're looking at this equation, this is actually incorrect. I actually figured this out with uh, Citrine and using her one ability, I believe it was Citrine. And this parenthesis right here, either which one, I don't care which one it is, should actually be right here, right next to the five, at the very end of the five, between the space and the five. And it's not. So what actually happens here is, is your Warframe's power strength gets multiplied by Rhino's fraction multiplier. Straight up. There's no, there's no change here at all. There's no weird equation. This parenthesis should actually be right here. So what's actually happening there is your Warframe's damage is getting multiplied by one plus Rhino's multiplier. That's basically, that's basically it. As after you've modded your Warframe, all you have to think about is that your Warframe's damage has been multiplied, which is awesome. And to put with that, what you need to be able to get your most bonuses from this is from Rhino, he needs at least 60% power strength to be able to ma match and meet with Equinox's power strength, which is about 80%, and he can't go any higher than that. And if you want to get your maximum bonuses from this buff, you only need, I believe it's 27.5% to be able to get your maximum bonuses from this as well. So this is pretty interesting across the board Rhino is just one of those where it's you have to do a lot of research behind it, but just take it from me. If, if you don't want to do all this math, that's great, but it does do pretty well, especially if you do pair this with a Rhino if, or with a Chroma. What essentially happens? Here's the summary of what essentially happens. If you watched Chroma, you know he gets about a 14 times damage multiplier, okay? What happens when this damage increase increases to 100% is Chroma doesn't get a 14 times multiplier anymore. If both of the abilities are at their max, which is 100% damage increase for Rhino and 14 times or damage multiplier for Chroma, what happens is Chroma's multiplier goes from 14 times automatically to 28 times. It doubles. 
his bonus. This is big. This gets hard. If you have Rhino, this really helps Chroma. This really does up his damage. So if you have a Chroma, <laughs> Rhino might just be your best buddy. Mm. Just saying. Also for abilities as well, if you have watched Saran, this also helps Saran quite a bit. Even with her 300, I believe it's 300% or 200% bonus uh, power strength, this also buffs her power strength as well, making it so that her corrosive damage gets buffed up even higher after the effect. So this is just really, really good for the power strength. Rhino Stomp. Rhino Stomps with force sufficient to disrupt time, tumbling enemies around him in stasis. Drain is 100 energy, damage is 800 blast, radius is 25 meters, speed decrease is 97.5, and the duration for that speed decrease is eight seconds. So what essentially happens, you just stomp your foot on the ground, everyone goes up in midair and gets Stacy there in midair. This is almost like if you're watching the flash, Everyone just gets stopped mid-motion in the middle of the air and they go slow-mo and they can't move. So this is really, really cool. Nothing other than just the visual effect of just seeing them in the air floating. So pretty cool. And as I promised, for the Tau Forged Ar Azure Archon Shard, there is more math as well for Archon Shards here. And for Crimson Shard, just to understand about your Iron Skin. How to mod your Iron Skin and what to just basically look for. So we're going to be going into a little bit more depth into Iron Skin here. So for Rhino, we have on this wiki page something I find very interesting. And it's something that's missing. You have no idea what it is. You have no clue what it is. But here's the mathematics for Iron Skin to be able to calculate what the actual maximum health is. There are two things that are missing within this equation. So first off, you have your armors and your ability strength and your absorbed damage. And when I came into this, I was like, hey, wait a minute, you know, Frost, he has additional armor. He has additive armor. Is there any additive armor in this? I don't know. So I, I did some research. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Scratching my head. And then I figured out something. I was like, hmm. I clicked on tips and tricks and I saw Arcane Tanker can significantly improve armor boost, effectively increasing Iron Skin's health by roughly over 100%. And I was like, Wait, that can't be right because Nowhere in here does it actually say additive armor at all. Where, where does it say additive armor? It doesn't say it here. It doesn't. And Arcane Tanker adds its additive 1,200 armor for 60 seconds. And I'm like, where are they pulling that from? It doesn't say anywhere in the ability. So if you scroll down on Arcane Tanker, it shows the additional armor is not affected by mods. It's additional armor and it's additive to total armor. Additive to total armor, what? For example, Chroma with a max steel fiber and a rank five arcane tanker will have an armor rating. And of course it does the armor rating for Vex armor right here in this page. But what we're interested in is this tip down below, which kind of gives me my hint at where to go next. As Arcane Tanker increases its total armor, it significantly bonuses boosts any ability that relies on total armor. What is the difference? Total armor, additive armor, what? I don't understand this, what? They're giving two different verbiages here, additional armor and total armor. And I was really confused. I like. What is even happening? Because I can't even understand what they're saying. Rhino's iron skin, which can be further amplified by iron 
cloud charge. Okay. Well, Arcane Tinker does increase. It does increase Rhino's iron skin with total armor. And I was like, huh. Okay, well, total armor. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to see if I can't ping Rhino's page for total armor. So I go into to iron skin and I go, okay, I'm gonna just gonna ping total armor. Oh, it's right there. Rhino's total armor is multiplied by 250% and is also added to Overguard. This is also incorrect. It is not multiplied to overguard. If you were doing the math and you're like, okay, well, it's just, it's just multiplied into the, the armor multiplier, which the armor multiplier is 2.5% down here. Then it's just multiplied into this string of equations. So it's armor multiplier by total armor, which, which would be base armor added to additive armor by your armor mods by every, like you get millions of overguard at that point. There, there, there's no rational reason that you get millions of points. That's just not logic in the game. You don't get millions in your overguard. And I was just like, okay, someone goofed here. They didn't add in where the additive armor is. And they didn't add in a second thing, which is, and let me go to this augment, Ironclad Charge. How does Ironclad Charge, if it increases each enemy hit, increases Rhino's armor ratings by 50% for 10 seconds, how does that also get added in to this here? You know one of my favorite Warframes that I keep on coming back to, and that I always love and know, it's Mr. Frosty. And I looked at his abilities, and I looked at Snow Globe, and I'm like, hmm. And initially, I didn't think anything of it. But um, his Snow Globe is right here. It has where the additional armor goes in, everything right there. I'm like, is it the same equation? So I start punching in numbers. I figured it out. I took my own time, and I figured it out. I, I had to figure it out myself. There's nothing, no one to help me. I took my time. I figured it out and I'm just going to boot the equation so you guys don't have to listen and try to figure this out yourself. So my equation, my initial equation was Rhino's original equation, which is this line right here. I'm going to bump this up so you guys can see, well, no, it's too much. It's too much chicken scratch for you guys to read. So this is the original equation. This is the secondary equation, which I basically figured out that the, <laughs> more math, the armor, additional armor was multiplicative with the armor multiplier, which it stated in Rhino's page. And it's also multiplicative with ironclad charge. Okay. I, I was trying to figure this out. I was like, okay. So it's, it's additional. It's multiplicative with multi, armor multiplier. And it's uh, multiplicative with ability strength. And it's also multiplicative with iron charge. But it's not multiplicative with anything else. So I, I completely subdivided it out. And I was like, okay. What is it actually affected by and how is it actually affected? That's how I figured it out. Then I also figured out that the base armor is also affected by iron cloud charge. And that is also in here as well. So I added in a function for that as well. And then I went ahead and I simplified the actual equation so that you guys can come in here and just copy off of me, copy paste, and you can be able to understand what the heck is going on here. So this here is your simplified function, your function three. And this 
line right here is going to tell you how much your armor is. This is going to tell you how much your health is for your base health. It just adds your base health. Then you're going to multiply by your ability strength and you're going to add your absorbed damage and you're going to get what his iron skin is equal to. I had to figure this stuff out. I wish I had a little bit more tools and a little bit more knowledge to be able to figure this out. I had to figure it out myself. I had to figure out where the armor multipliers were, how they function. I did not look up Reddit. I did not look up anything. I literally went in here and I just did a little bit of math. And in about an hour or two, I figured it out. It did not take very long and I figured it out. So this, this is my equation. Um, things to note and things to note also in the frost video as well. If you're looking at power strength, frost, his power strength, if you add hundred percent power strength, that's where your blue shards or your red shards actually start falling off. So past adding hundred percent power strength for frost, there's no real point in adding red shards. You really want to add blue shards. And for Rhino, at around 200 power strength, you want to be adding more blue shards. You do not want to be adding red shards. So adding 200% or 300% total. Same thing with Frost, 200% total power strength. And of course, when you add the mods into Warframe, it'll show you on the left-hand side the total power strength. It won't show additive, it'll show the total. Okay, when looking at Iron Skin, using my math, we can actually find out where the power strength tolerance is and where we want blue shards and where we want red shards. I did a whole bunch of math. I did a whole bunch of just checking where the levels were and how high it went and what we're kind of looking for. And for iron skin, around 300% is the point where the red shards start to fall off and you want more blue shards on. That's what your balance is. You can't really add on any more armor other than that and adding on more bonus percentage armor mods aren't going to really help you because those armor mods are only effective on base armor and his base armor is only 290 which isn't very much base armor in fact when you're looking at archon shards archon shards are adding more armor on a base 225 than would a 50 percent add in uh armor a 50% add in armor is only going to give you 150, whereas the Archon Shard is going to give you 225. So at this point, we would rather be looking at something that gives us more blue shards at a higher strength case. We want as much strength as we can get on this build for not only Iron Skin, but also for Roar, as Roar this damage increase, especially with if you've been listening to what I said about Chroma, getting that huge multiplier off of Chroma, where Chroma's 15 or 14 damage multiplier gets doubled because of that modifier. And now, especially with knowing that this modifier affects all fractions, it's a fraction multiplier, okay? And I wish... Again, it was a little bit more just stripped, but I mean, there is a ton of math and everything to go into here. So I'm just going to give the simple explanation. Go power strength. And we're going to take a look at the abilities or the upgrades for this guy. So we are looking at Mountain Man. Mountain Man. Arcane Energize. On energy pickup, 60% chance to replenish 150 energy. This guy has very little energy. You want to be very wary of that, but also you got to understand he can't get zapped. This iron skin is iron. It won't let anything through Which except for lovely. nullifiers. 
So be careful of your nullifiers. Watch for those nullifiers. You step in one, you kind of stepped on a landmine. Arcane Guardian for added additive armor here. Prime Sure Footed, if you've seen the Trity video, this makes sure you don't get knocked down. We could add on, if you wanted to, you could add on Heavy Impact. But as this has no real relative gameplay, Prime Sure Footed, especially if you get out of Iron Skin, as soon as you get out of Iron Skin, they can knock you down. And you want to be on your feet so you can cast another Iron Skin and so you're not vulnerable at that fraction of a moment in time. Steel Charge for melee damage. We are going to go the full Umbra set here because we want a whole bunch of armor for, for Rhino. This adds effectively almost near 400 armor or if not over that. So this is very useful for adding bonus or basically adding base armor. Umbral Intensify for adding 77% ability strength. We want to be adding ability strength with this entire build. There's no reason around that. Umbral Vitality, adding 180% health, making sure that we don't take any toxin damage as toxin goes right through our shields. We have Primed Flow for maximum battery. We do not want to be going low on energy and we want to have as much energy in our bar available at any point in time, making sure that we have energy in our stores available. We have Ironclad Charge. This, if you don't know, doubles your Iron Skin health effectively. If you don't have this on, this does not double it. You have this on, it doubles it. Any other of his augments for him? Ignore. Um, blind Rage, we want to add as much power strength as we can. We want to get up to that 300% point. We are currently at 286. We are going to be taking that dip in negative ability efficiency, but we also want to consider one thing. This roar has a radius, a donation radius of 25 meters. This roar goes on to all your allies, gifting them that fraction mod damage bonus. This is really, really good, but we do not want to be going negative duration and we do not want to be going negative range. Both of those are going to be very, 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 very bad for your squad mates because then they're not going to be able to get that bonus because they're not within range a and b if the duration's too low it'll only last 15 seconds and it'll be gone and i think they want that duration to be pretty good and i want that duration to be good, pretty good as well because if i'm rhino i don't want it falling off anytime soon i want it to stick with me and to stay with me for a very long time so i don't have to cast it over and over and over again a good duration for most abilities is going to be 90 seconds and this hits 45 percent with primed continuancy to negate the ability efficiency the negative ability efficiency and especially because we have very little energy here we're going to be using streamline to counterbalance that if you wanted to you could be going with fleeting expertise this will negate ability duration though, which will take out 15% or 15 seconds out of this roar. Those seconds are vital. I would not recommend doing this. If you are going to be doing this, I would suggest a different augment. My augment is Fire Blast. This hits huge area. This reduces armor by 75% across the board and it pairs very, very well with Rhino. If you are looking for a separate augment that you could be using with this build, the only other one that I could actually suggest is Steinax's Theros Strike. This also reduces armor, but instead of 75%, it reduces it by 100%. There's a problem with this, though. The area of effect that is effectively hit by Therios' strike is, I would consider to be one egg. The area that you hit is only one egg. With how much that you can hit, 
with Ember's Fire Blast for your money, instead of just getting one egg, how about 16? You can hit the entire board, knock everyone down, stop them from firing at you, and even though it's triple the cost, it's 16 times more effective because it hits everyone and it strips the majority of the armor off of everyone. This is pretty effective and that's pretty much the best you can get for the Warframe. If you are looking for a better armor stripper, maybe take a look into Frost where he can pretty much hit the entire board or Mag who is an overlord on this because of her range. She is very, very good on armor strippage. So if I was going to do the Theranos' strike, I would end up removing the streamline for fleeting expertise. The reason why is because the Theranos' strike, you have to spam. And because you're spamming it, you're using up a ton more energy. This is just innate. You're using a lot more energy when you're using Theranos' strike because it is not covering as much distance. It is reducing, sure, yeah, 100% of the armor, but in end effect, you're losing a lot of potential there. All right. So this is Rhino's Mountain Man build. I hope you like it. It's very, very good. We are gonna go ahead and go ahead and test it out now. Four shards. We do want to be getting near that 300% point. This is my shard outfit. I would put on four shards of blue just to give yourself quite a bit of blue shards and then add one red shard to get you that 15%. The extra 5% would get you near 291%. You are 9% away from the 300% threshold and at this point, this is the optimum build because we do not want to get rid of one of these blues. It will reduce your actual overall overguard by just enough so that it's noticeable. You want to be able to keep the extra blue on. With Rhino Charge, when you're casting Iron Skin, it will increase your armor significantly. You will get up into the 100k points easily with this thing iron skin will be very very tanky roar does quite a bit of damage and especially if you have a teammate like saran that is dealing ability damage this also ups their ability damage this is beautiful this actually does more than equinox at this point in time and for Fire Blast, this is pretty good and useful if you're going solo and you just want to clear some rooms. But other than that, I wouldn't say he's quite the large clearer such as Mag or something for just quick and easy farming. This is more for, I would almost say, an end game or just a survival build. But as I say, Mountain Man, he's kind of out on his own and he is kind of good and kind of bad because he has nothing really to protect anyone else with. He mainly just protects himself and he does a very good job of it. Therefore, Mountain Man. <laughs> mountain Man. Yes. Well, should we go ahead and test out this build? Yes. Did you want to change your melee weapon? Uh, yes. This took me a long time to figure it out. It actually took me one day to do all the math behind this to be able to figure <laughs> out and to actually put another extra six forma on. Yeah. And yeah, this is wonderful. I actually like this. I love this. We are actually not going to be going Mott. We are actually going to be going Fasa. Fossa. Fossa. I think I was actually playing with the old Jackal rework too. Oh, before really? they updated it. Yeah. Yeah.
I still love my flamethrower. <laughs> I still really enjoy the old... Uh, the old... Uh, the old jackal? The old jackal. Yeah. All right. Ready? Yes. Bat. Oh, poor little robot. <laughs> Parazon, you in the face. Oh, how did my iron skin get pulled off? Um, when it does that sh uh, shockwave, when it goes down, it's like a nullifying shockwave. Really? Yeah. So even for right now, I have thick thighs. <laughs> what is with that? Weird fate. Weird is fate. Weird. Well... <laughs> 21,000 on just Arcane Guardian. Can I just stand here? I can just stand here. <laughs> what? Do you want to do the last two? Sure. All right. You got pears on him. Yep, there you go. I love it. I can just stand here. <laughs> I will show that off at the very end. Because there's going to be a lot of people again. You go for it. Stab it. Stab him. There's supposed to be a lot of people at the end here. Was that the coin dude? That was the coin dude. Uh, yeah. Give me that coin. Coin! I'm leaving. I know it's a crown, but I like to call it a coin. Whee! Rhino neural objects. Alright. Now off we go to Mott. Are you ready to test out this build? Woo! <laughs> Alright. I'll take the credit booster. Shut down all systems and sending capsules your way. 
missed it. You missed it. I pressed the wrong button. One hundred thousand. Yeah. And the I highest know. number that we've achieved yet? Do you remember? Two hundred and something thousand. Two hundred and eighty thousand. Yeah. I actually was very, very slow on hitting the button, so I caught it when it went down a little bit. But, but it was still like 100 yeah. or 280. And the main reason I actually hit that was there was so many infested. I hit a whole bunch of them with the ironclad charge. But yeah. I do like having embers fire on. Oh, yeah. He is a beast. Oh, yeah. Hey, we've been silver. Get my shields down so I can use my first ability. Oh, oh you're, you're so smart on him? Yes. I love the range of that oh, for so embers. Cool. Yeah. And two, it's a, just an innate strip. I almost got to a hundred thousand, but there weren't a lot of people near me. All right, shall we go? We shall. Ooh. 
And this is Rhino. Rhino. Super cool. I really like that. That was fun. Yeah. But yes. Boop. Your actions will have consequences. Oh, uh, was it the stucker? It was the stucker. Bad stucker. <laughs> so, some things to note within Rhino is when you are at levels 200 plus, enemies usually do around a second maybe it takes them a little bit longer but around like 12 13k sometimes 14k something like that so even around 200 level 200 this will take them a while to get down through a hundred thousand health something extra extremely ridiculous like that this will make sure that you just survive for a very, very long time. If if your allies start to go down or whatever else, it means that you can actually pull people up, even if it seems like the situation is pretty hopeless. He just straight up ignores a lot of this stuff that actually happens. Whether it be knockdowns, whether it be that you're trying you're getting your energy zapped whether a whole bunch of stuff kind of just goes wrong he's just kind of there to make sure that you just don't go down so this is a really good warframe just for that um and i would just like to see what you guys do with this whether you pair this with a chroma and you add a ton of damage onto it and then you get a very good armor stripper in there like mag and then you see how much damage you can actually pop with a very good weapon i would be interested to see that because you're gonna have to have three players one person to pop the armor off another person to be chroma do a 14 times damage multiplier have rhino there do a secondary times two damage multiplier and just have a weapon modded out for straight up damage this would probably hit quite a few million i'm not sure how much exactly i'm kind of scared to say a number because it might be pretty high <laughs> um <laughs> uh yeah <laughs> about that <laughs> uh yeah oh let's see here Nah, that's all I can think of. Well, is that all the time we have for this episode? Unfortunately, yes. Yes, and we will see you guys in the very next episode. Bye-bye! Bye-bye!